You are testing the claim that the mean GPA of night students is different from the mean GPA of day students. You sample 40 night students and the sample mean GPA is 2.58 with a standard deviation of 0.84. You sample 60 day students and the sample mean GPA is 2.24 with a standard deviation of 0.86. Test the claim using a 5% level of significance. Assume the population standard deviations are unequal and that GPAs are normally distributed. Give answers to at least four decimal places. Okay, so there's a lot to work through before we really get started into performing our hypothesis test. First off is let's just identify what the claim about the population is. So I believe that was in the first sentence which read, you're testing the claim that the mean GPA of night students is different from the mean GPA of day students. So we can say, for instance, a group one, we'll call the night students just because they showed up first. And group two, we will call our daytime students. And you can switch, you can say group one is day and group two is night, and that's okay. You might have a different looking test, but you'll get the same results in the end. Now, the claim. The claim is that the mean GPA of the night students, so I'm gonna say mu sub one, is different from, so if it's different, that means it's not equal to, the mean of the GPA of daytime students. So there's my claim. So I am taking two different populations and comparing those populations. So I'm going to eventually need the statistics of each one of those. So of the night students, there are 40 night students. The sample mean is 2.58 the standard deviation of 0.84. And then there's a sample of 60 day students. Sample mean is 2.24 with a standard deviation of 0.86. We are going to be using a 5% level of significance. And the next bit of information, assuming the population standard deviations are unequal, that tells us if we need to pool our variances later on in the process or not. And I'll talk about that as we get there. But uh, then it stated that the GPAs are normally distributed. And what that would mean is we can be assured that we're working with normally distributed sets of data, no matter what our sample sizes are. But regardless, these sample sizes are bigger than 30. We would have been safe either way. So let's get started in this process. We have a claim and we want to turn it into a hypothesis. In order to turn a claim into a hypothesis, I need to decide if there is a statement of equality in that claim. And the not equal to is a, definitely not a statement of equality. So that will go in the alternative hypothesis and I'll just mark that as the claim. The null then is going to be the complement, which is that they are equal to one another. Based on the hypothesis, find the following. So the test statistic and the p-value. Now to do this, you really do need some technology at your fingertips because some of these calculations can be uh, quite difficult when it comes to t-distributions and comparing different sample means. I'm going to be using the TI calculator. Uh, whatever you're using is fine, just make sure you know how it operates. Okay, so to perform hypothesis tests, we will press the stat button and go over to the tests menu. Now the option that we're looking for is uh, a two SAMP T test. And we're not using two sample Z test because that would be a two sample uh, test for the mean based off of normal distributions. But in order to use that, you would need to know the values of the population standard deviations. 
that wasn't presented to us. It was only the sample standard deviation. So we're using t distributions instead of z. So let's highlight that and press enter to get into that program. You can either do your input from data or statistics. And since we have the individual statistics of each sample, we'll switch over to that mode. Starting with sample one. Now I called group one my night students. So I had 40 night students. So I'm going to set N1 to 40. The sample mean of the night students was 2.58. And they had a standard deviation of 0.84. Now, group two is the day students. There was a sample of 60 day students. And of those 60 day students, they had a, oh, I put that in the wrong place. So N is the 60. The mean is of 2.24. And the standard deviation is 0.86. All right, that brings us down to the next option, which is to identify the type of test. So the symbol and the alternative hypothesis tells us what type of test we're working with. And in this case, it's not equal, so it's a two-tailed test, but just match the symbol and that's fine. All right, now we have one more option. Uh, we have this item that says pooled. And what this means is to pool the variances of the populations. And you would do this if the variances were uh, equal or uh, you could somehow deduce that they were equal. Very often in elementary statistics classes, the problems are set up such that the population standard deviations are unequal. So we almost always have this last option here for pooled set to no. So then uh, we go down to calculate. The calculator comes up with all the information that we need. The very first item is the test statistic and that is 1.96 and then we have the p-value which is 0.0528 And using that p-value, we can make our decision. And to do that, we take our p-value, and I tend to write it as a percentage, compare it to the level of significance of the test, which was 5%. Now this p-value is a little bit larger than 5%. And the rule is, if p is low, then null must go. But in this case, p is larger than alpha, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now that is the weaker of the two decisions that we can pick here. So we can either pick fail to reject the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. So the language in this interpretive blank down here, if we have the stronger result, we say there is sufficient evidence to do what we want. But if we have the weaker result, we say there is not sufficient evidence to do what we want. Now, whether we're going to reject or support the claim, you can do it one of two ways. So if the claim is in the alternative hypothesis, then you are trying to support it. If the claim is in the null, you're trying to reject it. Uh, so it is support here. And if you want to understand what the logic is, the logic is that when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we're certainly not saying it's a true statement, but it's more true than false. So for argument's sakes, we'll say that because we fail to reject the null, that we're saying the null is true. Which, because these are complementary, that then implies that the alternative is false. And since the alternative was our claim, 
we have effectively said the claim is false. So we want to word our, our interpretation in such a way that insinuates that the claim is false. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean GPA such and such and such. So that is not, that's uh, effectively saying that it's false. We're pointing in that direction at least. Now, lastly, I added one additional blank uh, at a blank significance level because I think it's important to indicate what level of significance you're using because had we used a 10% level of significance, then the result would have changed. But at a 5% level of significance, there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim.